Metal test week eight. Wow. We got, we're starting to see some really different wow. changes and we got different colors in these waters here. Uh, you want to zoom in there, Wayne, and we'll take a look here. Let's start with the lead, of course. Look, the lead. Kind of looking brand new to me, yeah, dude. It looks pretty brand new to me, too. I wonder if you leave it out for a while, would it turn white like some of those, those leads that you And the see? water's getting a little tannic look to it, almost a little Everglades look, you and, know? And it's funny, because I was wondering how much contamination lead actually produces in the water, and this was the main reason why I did this test. Out of all that water right now, other than the allergy, because you don't see allergy in this. I don't there know if algae no, can I don't know if that's, lead. I don't know if that's algae in there or... Well, interesting to see, because you can't even see the, really the galvanized hook right here. Maybe until next I we need a out. scientist. Wow, it's almost like powder coating, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> it is, it's got some uh, allergy buildup on it, and it's got some rust. It's starting to get that, uh, it's starting to get a little rustier, you know, kind of uh, patina you would call that? I don't I yeah it's just getting it's getting it's getting pretty bad now. But you can see the water. Look at the water man. I mean look look how galvanized. Green it is. That's the galvanized hook. Now I don't know if allergy's good. Uh, if that's bad I mean I, I don't know. We gotta we gotta ask the marine biologists about well, galvanized this. metals are uh, galvanized is more like a paint, I think. You know when they know it, it well it's it's more it's it's a metal but it's uh how they produce it's the like metal. It's they, like they they make the, they take the stuff. steel and then they add the galvanized into it to keep it from rusting, correct? That sounds about right, no? Well, I don't know. I honestly yeah. don't know. I know it's a metal. Either way. <laughs> Either way. Wow. Interesting. And here's the old Very. aluminum. There's aluminum. It's got a bunch of green algae on it, but I, I mean, it's not really, it's not really corroding, although you do see some oxidization on it. It's got a little oxidation, yeah. It's starting, I, I this but, is, but you can see how this, how all the waters are different colors. I mean, it's amazing that they're not all the same color. And here's your stainless steel. Now the stainless steel almost looks brand new still, as well. Although the water is definitely, but it's funny how the lead is the clean, clearest water that we have. You know what I'm wondering though. See, this is where you're like, you're trying to prove to the fact. I think you're the looking to say, steel. hey, lead really don't hurt the water that much. Here's what I'm thinking. Looking at this, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that lead is that potent to where it won't allow nature to really do her thing if these are some type of of, of of a an algae or a mildew type something on the order of that you know do you want to take a sip and see what it tastes like i, I don't know man <laughs> you're gonna pay you're gonna pay for the pay of camp what is it kale pectate <laughs> i might get to my poop together anyway this is very interesting guys it's week eight <laughs> we're gonna come back and see what we got i'm gonna put some fresh water in there to build it up a little bit more but the salt still stays, stays the same in there, so salinity level is going to be the same. It's interesting to see what we're going to have in week nine because it's just getting darker and darker and darker and darker. So uh, you think you're not getting much evaporation out of this, or are you? Yeah, yeah, you're getting a little bit, but I fill it up. I, I, this will be at week eight. It will be the second time I filled it up. So basically, I'll fill it back up to the to the line there with the good clean with salt water. No, no, fresh water because it's already got salt in it. The salt doesn't dissolve; it stays in there. So it's just like a, sh a okay, fish tank. Yeah. Salt doesn't evaporate, the water does. The water does. See okay. all that rim, that salt in all there right. too. So interesting. Guys, this, we're going to come back next week and see what we got after this. Wow. this we're going to continue this <laughs> and see how, how far it actually goes. Welcome to your Next Generation Fishing Report. This is your intro report for the week. We haven't seen Captain Danny in a while. He's been doing work on the water. They don't let me out often. They don't let him off the water often. It's a geriatric thing. I guess, you know, or out of the home, whichever one. Homeboy. <laughs> So Danny, tell us what's going on uh, inshore. I got my reports from uh, I get my reports from up north. So nice. I know you get your reports from in our local area here. Well, we got a bunch of wind. The water muddied up some inside the Lake Worth Lagoon, but I fished yesterday. Well, I, you know I'm doing my charters, but on my day off, guys, I'm on the water. When when I get a day off, I like to sleep in. I can't. I get back out on the water because I'm always looking for fish. It's like, uh, it's like in school, you gotta do your homework. And, uh, you gotta do your homework. I'll tell you what, yesterday, I'm looking, well, I'm looking for bait fish, really what I'm looking, trying to keep my pulse on the bait. I came across, look, the snook from Boca Raton north to probably Stewart, because I covered a lot of ground yesterday oh, in Palm ground. Beach County, I covered a lot of water, and almost every flat, when I say flat, I'm talking two to four foot of water, on these big sandbar flats. Nice and skinny. Big snook. Scattered out. And I bring a rod and reel, trust me. And well, I bring four. I tried through every lure I had at them, and I just didn't have my magic yet. I could not get these fish to eat. 
There's lots of big fish move, have moved up into the shallows, guys. So this is when you break up in small top water lures in the morning. Yeah, yeah the Super Spook Juniors, the skitter walks. Yeah, yeah. Skitter walks, anything to early morning, go with small top water lures. They're, there's lots of mullet around, but I think these guys are wanting small bait. They're wanting these pilchards to show up, and they haven't shown up. you got lots of snook around. Um, we had a bunch of rain here earlier in the week. <clears throat> the spillways opened up, and the snook loaded up in them. And now that they've closed, the spillways are all closed Shut now. For a little bit. Yep. What I did yesterday was I ran up the Boynton Canal, I ran up the Lake Worth Canal, and everywhere I went up into them canals, big snook cruising, 20 pounder, and there's another 20 pounder. It's like the big fish are on the move. What's going on at night? I can't tell you. That's yeah, what's going on. We haven't done that time fishing in a while. We've got to do that. We've got to make another fun trip. This summer. This we'll summer. get out of this summer because that's when you want to get out of the heat. Like right now, it's hot out. Right now, there's probably good nighttime bites going on. Danny, I've saved. I've got one more of those magic lures. That Don't get rid of it. One more. One, I've been saving it for our next well, trip. Well, we know a guy. We know a guy. A guy named yeah, Andy Alvarez. He might be able to get the guy that makes them to make some for us. Um, We're nobodies real quick, here. We can't get our own, you it's, know. I'm a nobody. I used to be somebody. <laughs> you know how the guys say, you know, I'm somebody in the industry. I used to be not no more. Freshwater side, if I can hit yeah, on that real quick. The freshwater I side. fished freshwater today. Got two days off in a row, man. It was magic. I got to hang out with me and my boat, and we had a good time. I couldn't find, I saw some peacock bass today inside the Keller Canal chain, you know, the Lake Osmore and Lake Clark, this whole area in here where we're located at. I saw peacock bass. A lot of them were on beds. They weren't big fish, but I caught more largemouth bass today throwing little three inch. Hard bait, a little small lip, three inch jerk bait, orange in color, orange and gold right now. You know the orange and gold is such a good color. <laughs> orange really and gold, is. I caught more largemouth bass today than, and I'm looking for peacocks, you know, and Andy don't like the peacocks. One of them, and I'm like, well, dude, you know, I'm not going to buy peacock rods from you if you won't promote the peacock thing for me. But he's not God. But lots of bass around, dude. Lots of bass. Lots of bass. That's well, you know, and I got schooled a little bit on the bass fishing. I'm um, talking to you know one of on my other show. We're talking about the uh, talking to a couple of the bass guys out there in Okeechobee, and they were saying the water levels play such an effect on where the fish are going to be. And these guys got it so tuned in. They're like, if the water's at here, this is where the fish are going to be. Mm -hmm. If the water level drops here, I'm going right there to the fish. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's it's. I was like, well, how many did you catch today? They're like, well, we were on at least four or five an hour. That's and that, that ain't bad fishing, but I can guarantee if you really go out there and you work it hard. Work it hard, yeah. And you guys, find, if you find the schools of fish. Well, these guys, what they're doing is they're prospecting. They're going out there a couple days before the tournament. They're not trying to beat up. Well, they're up tournament fishing. Yeah, they're So tournament. what they're doing, they're looking for fish. They want to find out where the big fish are hanging out and then go fishing. And then go fishing, yeah. I mean, I, I can just see Lake Okeechobee right now in the mornings is probably on fire. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's what we do offshore too, the tournament guys. We go, we'll go prospect a couple days before, figure mm -hmm. out where, and you're not trying to locate the exact spot. You're just trying to figure out where the fish are all hanging out. And offshore pelagic species is a whole different ball game. Which Andy and I landed on last week. We found there I heard was, Andy found a shark again. Well, ton to eat. Well, these, <laughs> I was looking for kingfish and wahoo, stuff like that. Andy's always looking for sharks. He's always you know? looking for sharks. Do you know if Andy's with you on a boat, guys, you're going to catch some sharks. But we found the kingfish. And there were other boats scattered out around us, and I watched all day long. Nobody had bent rods. Andy Alvarez, Captain Danny Barrow, we got on some big kingfish last week. I lost a big wahoo. I'll save that you know, for that's you. how let's, that goes. Let's, just say, let's save that for you and Andy. You know, so I heard, he ain't going to want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I heard, though, up, up north has been a good bite. The mackerel have been chewing up north. You're talking Spanish mackerel. Spanish mackerel, yeah, uh, yeah, Latin mackerel, Latin mackerel. We don't want to offend well, anybody. Well, you know, Latin, there. Spanish, whatever, to me. But I can tell you right now, they never showed up in this yep. zip code this year. And they, Danny, they were biting. Uh, my buddy was up there, and he was fishing for reds and snook, throwing soft plastic. They were biting soft plastics. On the flats? Um, they were right at the mouth of the inlet. We're talking Sebastian. Sebastian, yep, right at the mouth of the inlet nice. on the inside. Nice. The, uh, the mackerel were biting. There was also uh, the tarpon were rolling up there too. So yeah, I heard there's a tarpon bite going on up there. There's yep. also a great tarpon bite going on in Flamingo. For those of you that like to travel, that from anywhere down into the Keys right now, it's tarpon central. It's going off. If you've got the boat and you got the gear and you got the money and the time, head south. Go for them tarpon. I can't find them around here. I'm sure there's some on the I beaches. I feel like but they're south of us and north of us. They haven't really made it. Well, the, the summertime, we get our like our resident schools. Yeah. 
but they're not like they are down there. These fish are funky, man. They do not, they're really hard to get to eat. Um, you got to get the lead fish. You got to get that lead fish and you can't, if they see the line, it's over, dude. They're going to turn away from you and everybody's going to follow them. So, uh, other than that, I didn't hear much of a good snook bite up north. Mm -hmm. uh, no redfish, those have quiet down a little bit up mm -hmm. there. But it, it's a phase. It's They're going to go through a little it lull. Is, it is. They will go through a lull. And uh, with that, I think it's because this nor easily turning up the water. Um, so tips and Water temps. Water temps a lot too. So tips and tricks. Uh, let's go over tips and tricks then. Uh, talking about the flats. Mm -hmm. What I would do on the flats is I would, uh, I would take, there's a white skitter walk. It's a little smaller. It has a little pinkish uh, lip on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I would throw that on the flats. Um, I would also throw my silvers on the flats. I'd also throw that clear with the sparkle in it on mm -hmm. the soft plastic. Something a little flashy. Those are things I would use. Mm -hmm. um, if the water muddies up, we all know we'll switch to the darker colors. Go to the darker colors because they're looking for profile. And the darker colors show up in the muddier water. The darker, everyone thinks if you use a bright color in muddy water, they're going to really see that bright color. And it doesn't work, guys. you got to go to the darker colors in the dirty water. What about you? It's, it's, Pro it's, tips, any more for them? It's, man, if, you, if, you'd have, if, you, if one of y'all out there would have been with me yesterday on my boat, you'd have looked at me and gone, I cannot believe that that big snook you just threw four-inch DOA jerk baits, I, 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 little ripping minnows by owner, I threw every super spooks. I mean, I was throwing, bumped up the five-inch jerk baits. I just couldn't get them to do their thing. They're wanting live bait. You want a tip and trick? Find the Fine. pilchards. You find the pilchards, you're going to get the snook bite because they are chomping on them now. I know they are. So my thing when they get finicky like that, I feel like with the weather we've been having, the cool front push down through us here, you're going to get, that's going to be a better late night to early morning bite. Oh, the night bite. I mean, I feel like the late night and early morning bite, like right before the sun comes up, would mm -hmm. be the best time if you want to target them. And you're the you're the snook master here. This though, is so. where yeah, I used to be. I'm not yeah. as good as I used to be. I don't. I think I'm losing it because I'm getting jaded. But here's another thing: on these flats, if you get on a flat during the daytime and you see these big snook roaming around, go fish those flats at night. Your odds don't go up that much because what you're going to be using, like at night, if there's a, there's a bunch of mullet around, they're feeding on these mullet at night. Even though they're looking to eat smaller baits, if the big, if there's six and eight inch mullet are everywhere, that's what they're going to be eating on. Get up on these flats at night. Use the slider cork systems, the ones that you can probably I'm out there. I've done talks on them before. Yeah, we've showed we've showed them before. And just let them swim around on a flat and be patient. If you got power poles on your boat, stick them down. If not, take an old. Uh, uh, what were they? The stick it anchor pin. I've got one I used on my old little skip. The ones that you do manually and just stick that thing in the sand or the mud and just be patient. Put two or three baits out if there's two or three of you on the boat. Let them corks do their thing. Keep, in, keep the rod in your hand, that thumb on it or the line on a spinner. Either way, keep that rod in your hand. Don't throw it in the rod holder because if that big hits, fish hits it and takes off with that it's bait, it's, it's going to happen really, really quick. But they're roaming around. These fish just weren't laying on flats. They're moving around looking for food. And I don't care how many mullet are on that flat. You put a cork behind that bait and it's swimming around with that cork in it. It's sending out signals. And those snook hone in on that one bait and they will eat that bait. It's all about bait presentation. So right now live bait is the way to go unless you're stubborn like him and I. It's, it's all about, yeah, we're all trying to fool them. And you spend four hours like I did yesterday chasing seven or eight monster snook around wanting to get one to eat. That's all I wanted was one. Swan. One picture is all I'm looking for and one good fight on light tackle. Live bait guys, live right bait. now, go go with a live bait. You can't go wrong. All right, well that is your inshore report with Captain Danny Barrow and Devin Canhai. We will see you next week. The, your guys all offshore report. Listen, we've got a couple good weekends uh, of fair weather and all of a sudden the firefighters tournaments coming up Every year it's the same scenario, and now they're calling three to fives this Saturday. I don't know if they're cursed or what, but it just seems like firefighters gets, the firefighters tournament gets screwed every single week. Tough weekend. guys, tough every conditions. Year, right? Well, yeah, but it's okay because the fishing's usually good. But they always, I was just going to say, that tournament is always big fish. It's always snotty for some reason. It's funny you said that. Every year they get snotty weather. 
but a lot of big fish get weighed at that tournament. Yeah, usually you see the biggest kingfish of the year caught in that tournament. This is the Boynton Beach Firefighters Chili Cook-Off Tournament. Right. If, uh -huh. if I'm right, right. that's, that's what correct. it's called. They also do a chili cook-off. If you live in this area, get in on some of that chili because they got all different kinds of people there making all different kinds of chili and you know it's but but let's talk about what's being caught i mean let's talk about um you know the wahoo bite is, is simmer down but they're still catching them which mm -hmm. is kind of odd this time of year mm -hmm. um like it weren't it wasn't biting like they were two weeks ago or three weeks ago for that matter but they're still around and people are still catching them right it's not like they totally disappeared they're still around now willie they... howard caught a couple nice ones this week not biggies but not, you know, 25, 30 pound, those are nice wads. And the blackfin is show, starting to show up, which is no, not, you know, typical of this time of year. The dolphin bite's still been really good. And now you're starting to see the kingfish rolling in here thick. So there's a lot of people out there, the commercial guys are actually starting to go out there. And, Lots and, uh, of small kings, the medium kings, and then you're going to get them bruisers mixed in. You're going to get those bruisers. When you find the big ones, they're going to be in a group of pod together. And they're going to be within a football field of each other, man. And right. when they get in that little zone, that's where you want to be when you're tournament fishing. But all together, the fishing has been getting better. It's the time of year. Everybody looks forward to this time of year. There's no secret. So keep in mind, guys, but be safe out there with this uh, firefighters tournament. It's going to be rough. Uh, Sunday is not going to be as bad, and, and of course Friday is not going to be that, that bad either, but it just seems Saturday is just going to be three to fives, which is manageable, but it's still going to be snotty. So uh, nevertheless, uh, we'll give you the weather and predictions here, right, uh, uh, when we get back. The weather and predictions, Devin, what do you got? All right, this weekend, unlike every other weekend that we've had before that's been great, it's not going to be a good weekend. Well, it's the firefighters tournament, of course. So they're saying... Five foot seas on on Friday. I mean on Friday, wow, I'm sorry. On Saturday, five foot seas with the occasional sevens and nines. Sevens you know, and nines. I heard three to fives, but I in the Gulf Stream sevens to nine. Okay. If you when you get to the stream. Okay, and on Sunday it's a little better. They're saying four foot seas on an average, which your occasional sixes in the Gulf Stream. Which so, is manageable. Which is manageable. So Friday's gonna be your day to fish. Tomorrow's gonna be your day to fish if you go out. It'll be your best shot, so take the day off, call the boss, tell him you're sick. You got the nautical flu's going around, I tell you right now. So, uh, the second round of the flu, it's a conspiracy. The, it's though. a nautical flu. <laughs> get your salt therapy, get out there and we'll, get fishing. We'll sign, you, we'll sign the slip for oh, well. you that, that you've been, you got the nautical Doc, flu. Dr. Alvarez. Next generation will definitely sign that slip for you so you don't get in trouble at work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching our fishing report. We'll see you next week with uh, hopefully a better one.